We begin with this video, a description of the capital asset pricing model. This model tries to say something about how the expected returns should behave given the associated risk and given that the preferences of the investors are like the ones we described intersection in portfolio theory. One crucial element of the CAPEN model is the market portfolio. In order to define this object, one needs to refer to a given investment universe where the model is going to be applied. For the sake of this explanation, suppose that our investment universe is the Swedish economy, that is all risky financial assets traded in the country. Suppose that there is a very rich tycoon who wants to buy all financial wealth in Sweden. Her entire wealth to be invested in this investment universe should thus be the value of all risky financial assets traded in Sweden. Her portfolio will have weights determined by the fraction that their individual value represents out of the total value of all of them. For example, the weight of the stock of Ericsson in her portfolio should be equal to the value of all the shares of Ericsson divided by the value of all the financial assets in Sweden. Her portfolio should thus have weights set equal to the relative market value of each one of these components. It is exactly this portfolio that is known as the market portfolio. We're going to present the main prediction of the CAPM model in four simple steps. It is quite likely that you have come across a basic principle in economics that says that in equilibrium, prices should be set in such a way that demand meets supply. Capen has as the departure point, the assumption that our investment universe is in equilibrium and thus the prices of our financial assets are set so that their aggregated demand equals their aggregated supply. But what portfolio of risky assets only is the aggregated demand in our investment universe? Recall that assuming that our investors only care about expected return and standard deviation, and that they like expected return and thus like standard deviation, they will all pick as portfolio of risky assets the tenancy portfolio. The tenancy portfolio is that's the aggregated demand. And what is the aggregated supply in our investment universe? Well, by definition, such aggregated supply is the market portfolio. Hence, recalling our initial assumption that prices must be set so that demand equals supply, the tenancy portfolio must be equal to the market portfolio. In other words, the prices of the financial assets must be set so that the portfolio weights of the market portfolio, that is, the relative market value of all risky financial assets, results in a portfolio that maximizes the sharp ratio. So, if we bring back our familiar graph where we display spectre return in the vertical lasers and standard deviation in the horizontal lasers, and we insert the points corresponding to the pairs of the spectre return and standard deviation of the risk-free asset and the market portfolio, given that the market portfolio will coincide with the tenancy portfolio, this capital allocation line, also known as the capital market line, will be tangent to the efficient frontier of risky assets only. And thus, this capital allocation line is the efficient frontier. That is, it will contain the set of portfolios of potential interest for our investors. They will be interested in nothing but combinations of the market portfolio and the risk free asset. You may probably be thinking, okay, that's cool, but what can I do with this gibberish? The market portfolio is such an enormous portfolio that the idea of constructing it is a mere abstraction. Where's the practical use of all of this? In order to be able to put this whole machinery in practice, it is assumed that the main stock exchange index of the investment universe is a good approximation of the market portfolio. In Sweden, that would be the OMX index. 
With this simplification in mind, Capen gives a clear investment recipe. Pick a portfolio of the main stock index and the risk-free asset. This is all for now. See you soon.